All right, everyone, we are back and we are going to talk about dislocation defects or 1D defects uh, or line defects, um, whichever you would like to refer to them or however you would like to refer to them. Um, and they're actually an incredibly important um, and critical type of defect that impacts a significant um, amount or, or basically that determines a lot of the mechanical properties that materials exhibit, especially in plasticity. So um, that's kind of the key idea here. So we are looking at dislocations and we can kind of see here. Um, and basically these are line defects. Um, dislocations involves uh, basically a translation of one part of the crystal respect to another. A disclination involves rotation or twist. Um, at, in advanced levels of materials, disclinations um, are very important. Um, twinning, twisting, those things. But we're gonna focus on two very, very important um, dislocate, dislocations, not disclinations, um, edge and screw dislocations. And these have, again, significant impact on the material's mechanical response to stress. So an edge dislocation, you can imagine it as this kind of extra half sheet of paper inserted that does not terminate. You see this line terminates, this line terminates, this line terminates, this line terminates, but this line does not. So that's kind of the key idea of how you visualize an edge dislocation. A screw is a bit harder to visualize, um, but you can kind of see a screw dislocation below here. That's another edge. Um, and it kind of has this type of, you know, uh, basically a change in uh, basically change in our Z direction or change in some direction here. So you can kind of see it's shear really that kind of can create that, um, that type of defect effectively that occurs here. But anyways, um, when we, when we're trying to categorize or figure out what type of defect we have, we are going to develop a framework called, um, a burger circuit or disc, uh, basically a dislocation circuit. Um, so, each dislocation will be described by a Burgers vector and a unit tangent vector that's tangent to that dislocation line. Because again, it's a 1D defect. Um, so um, again, it's always tangential. The Burgers vector is going to, and the relationship between the Burgers vector and the tangent vector will tell us a lot about what type of defect we have. Now, when we develop our Burger circuit, um, we are gonna, in this class, use SFHF, start to finish, right-hand convention to, vi to define a burger circuit. You might see other um, resources and lecture notes that use different notation, but in this class, we will always use this. So first thing, define the positive sense of our unit tangent vector. Then define a starting point and make a right-hand circuit and go from start to finish, counting equal number of steps along each path of your circuit. Then close your circuit by connecting your start and finish points and if we do not have a defect in there, the start and finish should end at the exact locations. If I have a pure edge, my Burgers vector and tangent vector will be perpendicular at the end. If I have a screw, if it's a right-hand screw, it will be Burgers and tangent parallel. If it's a left-hand screw, it'll be anti-parallel. So, uh, and the cool thing is, it doesn't matter about your initial selection and the first step of the positive um, notation of T, you'll still be able to obtain the same um, uh, result. So what are we talking about here? Actually, let's do it on these fresh ones. I am going to define, this is my dislocation line, um, and it penetrates inside the crystal. So I am going to pick, first step, my positive tangent vector is going to come out of the board here. So that's my tangent vector. So I'm going to start now and draw a circuit. And this is my starting point here. Now, it doesn't matter what starting point you pick, but if I don't go, for example, if I draw a circuit like this, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, I don't encapsulate or I don't enclose my defect. So my starting point, my finishing point are the exact same, then there's no defect uh, involved in there. The Burgers vector is zero. So I need to make sure to draw the circuit large enough to encapsulate my defect. So I pick my starting point here. I have my tangent vector here. If I want to do a right-hand circuit, I need to wrap around this direction from the starting point, so I must go this direction. If I go in this direction, it's the left-hand circuit. So I need to go one, two, three, four, five. Let's just pick five. 
One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now this is important. This is my start. This is my finish. I draw that vector. This is my burgers vector. The burgers vector here is perpendicular to this tangent vector because that's coming out of the board, 90 degree angle. So I know this is an edge dislocation. What about screws? Screws are a little bit harder. Again, I see the defect here. Um, it is penetrating in through the crystal. So I can go down or up. I'm going to choose my tangent vector as going up here. Now, here's the tip for your starting point. I want to start right at the edge of this defect, but I can choose here or here. But I don't want my first step to be, because again, I have to do a right-hand circuit, so it must go like this if I choose the direction like so. Um, so I need to, I want to stay in the same plane. So I'm going to start here. And I'm going to go ahead and count one, two, three, four. So I did four steps here. I'm going to drew it to the, to the whole circle, or the whole, whole circuit here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I did one, two, three, four steps here. So I need to do one, two. This was my start. This was my finish. Right hand circuit. And you can draw like directions that go like this. <laughs> my burgers vector start to finish is parallel. So I know that's a right hand screw. Now, let's say, for example, I chose, I'm going to go down here. So now if I want to draw a right-hand circuit, I have to actually go the opposite way. So I need to go here. So I'm actually going to choose now here my starting point like this. So let's see if we can obtain the same result. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to wrap around. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boom, boom. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I did one, two, three, four. So to close it, I need to do one, two. This was my start. This is my finish. The burgers vector is pointing down now, but again, the relationship still holds. We're still a parallel. We can do the same thing here. What if I chose that this, let's say I'm going into the board. So now I need to go, I'm gonna start here. I need to go this way. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four here. Start to finish this direction. I'm still perpendicular. But you see my sense of B has changed as well. They just, they basically, they both go in the opposite direction. That's it. Like that, that's the, your 1D defects. That's your burger circuit. You're going to have lots of problems on that. Um, we have a cool little animation that we can look at um, in some other videos. And next time we'll get into 2D defects. So see you then. Thanks. Bye.